even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. How many grace cases do I have in the house today? Even me, Lord. How many people know we're not worthy? Even me, Lord. Let some drops. Glory to his name. Is that your testimony today? Come on and bless the Lord. Even me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Elam. How's everybody doing? Praise God. First, give an honor to God, the creator of heaven and earth. He is my sustainer, my keeper, my everything. Amen. Amen. So the shepherd of this house, the angel of this house, my spiritual father, I thank God for Pastor James and his faith in me, even me, a wretch, broken, torn, but God, hallelujah. I will not be before you long, but there is a word I would like to share. Amen. I ask that you pray with me. I am trying to get some deliverance today, so I've been up since 5, 10 a.m. this morning. Praise God, because I know that God is expecting, he's requiring more of me. Amen. Sometimes we can be hard-headed. So today I come to surrender, and in that, I don't know what is he's going to do with me. So I just ask that you pray with me and be receptive. Open up your hearts and your minds for the word. Amen. So if you would rise with me, all those that can, I will be coming from Genesis chapter 22, a familiar scripture. We're going to revisit it today. Amen. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 13. <clears throat> and it reads as follows. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning. Somebody say early. Early. Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, He set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood I hear, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and all wise God, Father, we just come humbly before your throne of grace, but boldly, God. We come just giving you all glory, honor, and praise that is rightfully due unto you. Now, God, I ask that you take your humble servant, God, and just remove Shonda out the way that someone may be able to get a glimpse from you, God. Speak through me, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Oh, God, we stand on uh, tiptoes of anticipation, God. We're expecting, God, to hear a word from you. So we thank you in advance, God, for what you're about to do in this place. We love you and we honor you, God. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. We give thanks and let every heart say amen. Amen. You may be seated in in the presence of God. Today, for just a brief moment, I want to talk to you about frogs. <laughs> All right. Praise God for frogs. 
And I know that in the Bible, <clears throat> frogs is looked at as a negative. We know about the plague of frogs. Amen? Amen. How Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go, and God did what he said he was going to do. He released the frogs. We also know in chapter 16 of Revelation, it talks about that out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, we saw three unclean spirits which looked like frogs. So when we think about frogs in regards to the Bible, it seems to be a negative. Amen? But I want to talk to you today about having a frog mentality. <laughs> Fully relying on God. Amen? And it may, be it may be plural. You may have more than one frog. We may have frogs. So we're going to fully rely on God's strength. Amen? Yeah, right. But I thank God for frogs. And I'm going to share with you um, my uh, BFF, my girl, my sister in Christ, Andrea, shared with me about frogs. And, you know, I may not appear to always be listening, but I'm always looking for a sermon title. So I thank God for her. She's always teaching us something. And um, she introduced frogs to me. I knew it that day that I would use it later. And God said, today is today. So we're going to talk about frogs, fully relying on God's strength. Amen? So when we come to understand what that means, it simply means letting go and letting God. In Isaiah 26 and 4, it says, so trust in the Lord. Commit yourself to him. Lean on him. Hope confidently in him forever. For the Lord is an everlasting rock, the rock of angels. What stood out in this scripture for me was hope confidently in him. Isn't that what Abraham did? The scripture teaches us that he got up early the next morning after he received instructions. He didn't wait. He didn't ponder. He didn't debate with God. But he rose early in the morning, obedient. Amen? In verse 4, I'm going to read it again for you. And it says, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Now, what does that sound like? Confidence? He was supposed to be going to do what? Sacrifice his son. But yet he said boldly, you all stay here. Me and my son, we're going to take a trot. We'll be back. We will be back. That's confidence. Amen? There's no doubt in his mind that Isaac and I would not return. And that's how we must be confident in God. God is going to show up and show out. And why would we do that? Because we have a frog mentality. We are fully relying on God. So how do we become like Abraham, fully relying on God? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, we must trust him with every part of our being. I'm talking about truly trusting him. Not say that you trust him. But put it into action. There has to be application. Amen? When you trust God, we believe in his word. We believe that he can do anything but fail. And we lean not to our own understanding. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your what? Your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. You're not going to always understand what God is doing. You're not supposed to. But when you trust him, you walk in that. Amen? That's called crazy faith. <laughs> faith forces us to trust him, truly trust him. It creates a dependence upon God. When we recognize that we are nothing without him. But when he comes and he put his super on our natural, the impossible is possible with God. Amen? When we truly trust him, it keeps us humble. We stay in a state of reverence of God. Amen? Because we, we won't move unless he says so. Why? Because we are fully relying on God. It becomes a strength, not my own. For we are weak but strong. Habakkuk 3 and 19 says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go higher. He blesses me. He takes me to another level. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, can you imagine getting up early one morning in preparation, the process of sacrificing your only son? But when you believe in his word, when you know that his word won't come back void, when you stop and think things over, when you look back over your life and see what, how far he's brought you, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm 
I'm baffled sometimes that we forget that when we're going through a storm, when we're being tested, when trials and tribulations come, what do we do? We falter. We whine. We whimper. We forget how he's already blessed us. He's the same God that he was last time. Amen? He continues to show up and show out. But you got to have faith the size of a mustard seed. Faith that can move anything. Faith is the things hoped for and the evidence not seen. We're such a visual people. Can you see God today? I feel his presence. But can you see him? He's still moving. He's still blessing you. <laughs> but what was so powerful about for me in the scripture is that Abraham gave Isaac the wood. You mean to tell me I got to carry my own wood? You get ready to sacrifice me, I got to carry the wood? What are you all carrying today that you should put on the altar? What issues, what concerns, what burdens, what habits, what hang-ups, what sins? The altar. Let go and let God. When you fully are relying on God, you walk in it. Talk is cheap, y'all. You got to put that thing into action. But if you ain't got no word in you, if you ain't studying, meditating on your word, how can you be powerful to walk in anything? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and what? Destroy. But are you geared up? Are you, are you ready? Do you have on the full arm of God? Are you ready for battle? Are you letting Satan whoop your butt? Are you acting like a sissy punk saint when God's already blessed you? Okay? He's already made promises. How long did Abraham wait? How old was he before he got the, 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 uh, the provision, before the son came? He was 100 years old. He may not come when you want him to come, but you got to stay faithful because he's an on-time God. And his timing is always right. Amen? Well, you got to trust him even when you can't trace him. Even when your back is up against the wall, you got to know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy cometh in the morning. Get that word and speak it. What was Abraham doing? Speaking God's word in the midst of getting ready to make a sacrifice of his only son. Speak his word and believe it. Walk in that thing. Claim the victory. I don't care how long you've been waiting. Think about Abraham. He was 100 years old, but God blessed him. Fully. Relying on God. We're talking about frogs. God's strength, if it's more than one frog, amen? So then we um, goes on in um, verse number six says, <laughs> Abraham took the wood for the burnt off and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, said to Abra Father Abraham, Father, yes, my son. Abraham replied, the fire and the wood I hear, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb of the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. And I believe with my whole heart today that the Lord will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He can and will do anything but fail. Can I get a witness? How many times has he failed you? I'm talking about fully relying on God today. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. It didn't say might supply. He said will. Fully relying on God. Get that word in you. Meditate on it. Day in and day night. When you're going through, speak it. Speak those things that are not by faith as if they were. And claim your victory. Amen. But the question I need to ask you today, what are you withholding from God? What is it that you feel like you can't live without? Look at Abraham. The promise was not fulfilled until he was 100 years old. And then God asked him to make a sacrifice, to give back the gift that he had given him, that he had waited so long for. But just in the nick of time, 
Just as he raised his hand to slay his son, God showed up and blessed him. Amen? He's always got a blessing on standby, a ram in the bush. But you've got to believe by faith, just as Abraham did. Remember, sometimes we got to go through to get to. Sometimes you got to go through the fire. You got to go through the test. And just when you're about to give up, just when you're about to throw in the towel, God will show up and show out. Someone will come by to encourage you, remind you that God always has a ram in the bush. In order for you to fully rely on God, we must trust him, believe in his word, speak his word, and then apply his word each and every day. Amen? And as I prepare to close up, I'm going to close out with a story. I always try to have a story for you guys to relate to, something that you can visualize and visually see, because I already said that you're visual people. Amen? So Brenda was a young woman who was invited to a, um, rock climbing. If Brenda was like me, she don't like heights. But Brenda went anyway. Scared to death, she went with the group to a tremendous granite cliff. And in spite of her fear, she put on the gear. She took hold of the rope and started up the face of the rock. But when she got to the ledge where she could take a breather, as she was hanging on there, the safety rope snapped against Brenda's eye and knocked out her contact lens. And if you like me, you blind as a bat. Without that contact lens, you can't see nothing, amen? And Brenda said her vision was blurry, y'all. This is a true story, amen? So as she stood on that rock hanging hundreds of feet below her, as she looked up hundreds of feet below her and hundreds of feet above her, she looked around and looked and couldn't find the contact lens. Here she was far from home, her sight now blurry, desperate. She, began, she was upset and began to pray. Lord, help me to find my contact lens. When she got to the top, her friend examined her clothes and looked for the contact. No contact to be found. She sat, she sat down discouraged. In the meanwhile, the rest of the party was on their way up. A new group was coming up the cliff. And she looked across the range of the mountains, thinking about the Bible verse that says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. She thought, Lord, you can see these mountains. You see every stone. You see every leaf. And you know exactly where my contact lens is. Finally, as she walked down the bottom of the, of the cliff, uh, discouraged and disgusted, and another group of people was coming up, and one of them yelled out, hey, did anyone lose a contact lens? Now, would you imagine, you know how little a contact lens is, y'all? And if you wear them, you know that they're real little. <laughs> but you wouldn't believe where the contact lens was. A little ant was carrying the contact lens. <clears throat> And you think that's the story. And, and, and she went on to say that the ant had the look on his face. Lord, I don't know why you want me to carry this thing. <laughs> and at risk of being accused of being fatalistic, I believe that some of us today <laughs> need to look up to heaven and say, God, I don't know why you want me to carry this load. I can see no good in it. It's painful. It's stretching me. It's awfully heavy, but if you want me to carry it, God, I will. <laughs> because I am fully relying on God. And I declare and decree that I shall live and not die. <laughs> Greater is he that is within me than he that is of this world. <laughs> I can do all things through him who strengthens me. <laughs> Why? Because I'm fully relying on God. <laughs> and I'm going to slip out of my shoes. I know a man. <laughs> His name is Jesus. <laughs> Oh, he died one day, but he got up early with all power in his hand. And because he got up, I can get up. You can get up. I know a man whoo, who shows up and shows out. I know a man that heals. I know a man that delivers. I know a man that can do anything but fail. I know a man that looked beyond my faults and saw my knees. I know a man. Hallelujah. I know a man. Have you tried him for yourself today? Do you know that he can and will do anything but fail? He's still working out issues. He's still delivering. He's still healing. He's still setting the captives free. I know a man. Have you tried him for yourself? Do you know him for yourself today? I know a man who looks beyond my faults and see my knees. I know a man that's still providing. 
He's still healing, y'all. Stand up with me all across the sanctuary. I just encourage you all to get a frog mentality today. Fully relying on God's strength. We can do anything with Christ on our side. Don't give up. The best is yet to come. Don't allow your issues to confuse you of who's in control. He still sits high. He still looks slow. He's still working things out on your behalf. But you got to leave your issues at the altar. And so many times we come in the same way we leave out. We heavy burden. We're disgusted. We busted. That's because you're still trying to work it out. You got to let go and let God. Let God have his way. But stand on his word. Speak his word. Apply his word. Fully relying on God's strength. I'm going to ask the counselors to come forth, please. And you may be here today, and you're trying to let go and let God. You don't know how to do that. You just want some intercession today. You want some people to pray your strength. Pray that God will move on your behalf. Amen? Don't leave out of here the same way you came in. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. He's worthy, y'all. I tell you, he's worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way in this place today, God. Oh, God, we just honor you today, God. We glorify you today, God. We magnify you today, God. Oh, God, we're letting go and letting God today. Yes, God. Fully relying on God's strength. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen.